Okay, so we're gonna go over the CS102 course. Again, this is designed to be interactive. When you have questions, please let's bring them up during the course of this. There's a lot of slides here. If we start to run behind, I'll uh, try to rein it in. Um, first, a little bit about myself. The reality is I'm Dave Gunner, I have 25 years uh, experience in process automation, previously worked for Air Products and Chemicals as the Global Manager of Process Automation Development and Support, reporting the engineering uh, to the engineering team and the operations team. I think, you know, we could go through all this, but I think the core thing we want to we want to focus on as we go through this and as we have these conversations is this this Venn diagram kind of hits to the, the point why we're all here. Functional safety alarm management and cybersecurity are connected. They're connected at the end user and everything they do. Operators respond to process events or they respond to safety events. They respond to physical events, i.e. someone walking through the control room that shouldn't. They say, wait a minute, who are you? What are you doing? Um, so the operators have a known context for operating within these realms. Um, when they see a cybersecurity alarm or a cybersecurity issue, the operators will be usually the first to identify it, possibly the IT folks, but operators can see it also. Those boil into alarms. You have your standard alarm management and your functional safety. All this stuff works together. They work in, I don't wanna say collusion, that's a tough word today. Um, they work together. Um, so the key to, to understanding cyber security and how it applies. You cannot necessarily rule out the alarms of cyber. You can't rule out functional safety. They all work within the cyber umbrella. A safety system that's not secure is no good. A BPCS system that doesn't alarm is no good. Cyber security works hand in hand with that stuff. So that's a key theme. Exit has excellence in all three of those regions or all three of those areas. It's uh, kind of a cornerstone. Okay, so what is IACS security? First, let's talk about IACS. What is IACS? Industrial Automation Control System. I've seen PCS, I've seen ICS, I've seen IACS. Um, I wish we'd kind of settle on one term. Unfortunately, we haven't. Um, it's uh, the prevention um, of intentional or unintentional interface with the proper operation of Industrial automation and control systems through the use of computers, networks, operating systems, applications, and other programmable configurable components of the system. SCADA, supervisor control and data acquisition. PCN, process controls network. That's another one that's out there. Industrial automation, control system, uh, control system uh, security, or cyber security. Industrial networks is, uh, security. Electronic security for industrial automation and control systems. A lot of acronyms, a lot of names, um, but the, the cornerstone of that is industrial automation. What's the evolution? In the 80s, who would hack? It was all proprietary networks. It was all, you know, pretty locked down. Um, in the 90s, as a controls engineer, all we did was plug the green wire in. So we were all under, the, hey, can you give me data for this? Can you give me data for that? What did we do? Sure. Give me the ethernet cable, I can, I can send that file to you, not a big deal. So we just kept connecting, we kept connecting. And it's great that we did that. Unfortunately, we woke up with kind of a big hangover um, because we never realized the security aspects that we would run into. Um, 2000s, cybersecurity is discussed. People put in closed area network, cans, they put in small access control list, not a lot of security um, today. You know, all of us have firewalls on our PCs or firewalls in our home. We all have secure routers. Um, we all, you know, that's how we live our life at home. Why would we not do that with our plants, okay? Um, we have antivirus on our control, on our PCs at home, on your personal PCs. I go to plants sometimes, they don't have antivirus, okay? so. Just some common sense things say that we've evolved from this 1980s time frame. At the same time, what this doesn't say is between the 1990s and the 2000s, there was a push. There was a push to use open development, meaning use Ethernet. Don't create your own protocol. Use, you know, use PCs. Don't, don't give me a standalone OS that's not Windows. So we moved away from this proprietary 
and embraced open protocols for all this connectivity. And here's where we are today, all this connectivity. So in the 2010 era, um, you had NERC SIP uh, come out. Um, that's electrical, uh, the National uh, Institute of Standards and Technology. Um, a host of folks come out with cybersecurity standards. You have the ISA 99 that evolved into IEC 62443. You had a host of different folks come to the aid after the Stuxnet attack. Are you, are you all familiar with the Stuxnet? Some nation state, who will remain nameless, uh, developed malware to attack a particular industrial complex. Um, and, the net, and, the, and the sum of that attack ended up being lost production and the facility being three to five years behind from a production standpoint of where they wanted to be and what they wanted to produce and what the quality of what they wanted to produce is. How it was done, a lot of aspects around how. Um, it wasn't one little lever. It was multiple levers on any attack. It's never one thing. It's do I have the information? Uh, do I know the hardware? How do I exploit it? What are the known open holes? And that boils into the kill chain, uh, the cybersecurity kill chain. So the bottom line is a nation state attack with Stuxnet. We see that's like maybe 20% of the incidents we see out there. 80% of the cyber incidents we see or what we call the fumbling and bumbling. And excuse that term, fumbling and bumbling. The fumbling and bumbling are, I didn't know. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, he, he told me it was OK. Um, I didn't want to access that, but you know, I, was, I got lost you know, where I was going. So 80% of what we see is the fumbling and bumbling. People with not mal intent. People are just trying to do their job, and they just they fall short. 20% are the nation state attacks or the disgruntled employee attacks. Either way, the disgruntled employee or the nation state attack has knowledge of the system. They understand the system, they understand the attributes, they understand how it was designed. Therefore, they can exploit things that are not typically exploited in a standard malware attack. They understand the custom code, they know where to search for it. They know to replace a library block with this block because they've done the reconnaissance. How many of you feel you have a cyber sensitive job? Every hand in a room should be up because, <laughs> because that's, that's the way it is, okay? Um, it, now, when you take that the next step, if you're a controls engineer and you write a custom block that you put in the controller, that custom code can be perverted. It can be made into malware that attacks a specific design. That's what this open source stuff has allowed us to do. Unfortunately, that is, can manifest itself through a nation state can exploit that. So can a disgruntled employee who got fired or is upset or uh, so on and so forth. So there's a level of responsibility that comes with being a controls engineer today that just wasn't there 15 years ago. It just, you know, we built the plant, we built it safe. No one's gonna go in and change our blocks. It's not like that anymore. But yeah, Stuxnet was a, uh, and when I said 20%, this is, not the, this is not an isolated incident. There was a Ukrainian power grid. There was a New York water, there was a New York water authority. You know, we sit back and we say, how often does nation states attack? Uh, you know, how, how often? It happens a lot more than we know. It happens a lot more than we think. So 20% I think is a, is a conservative number um, because I think it is a new type of warfare that's out there. Unfortunately, why is it important? Um, we've we've talked about why it's important. Um, cyber attacks on control SCADA systems uh, they can cause injury, fatality, environmental co consequences, loss of production, off spec or dangerous products. Um, cybersecurity level generally needs to provide more risk than required safety integrity level. Um, than a safety instrumented function, more risk reduction, okay? Because there's so many holes to close. This is what we talked about a little bit before. 80% of this is unintentional. 80% of it's unintentional. 20% of it is intentional. Um, 
malware, virus, worm, Trojan, you know, those are from the outsiders, network device and software, um, IT department. Uh, one of the things is um, y there's a fine line between how often you patch and what you patch. If you patch everything all the time, you will have more downtime than you can imagine because the manufacturers of the control systems do not update and test every Microsoft patch, only the ones that are very, uh, only ones that are security based patches. So if you install a Microsoft, if you install a patch and the manufacturer hasn't tested it, it most likely will take down your system depending on how deep the patch goes. So it's a challenge, okay? Um, you don't want the IT folks to constantly go in and update your system, but you need to be friends with the IT folks to update your system when you need it. That's the fine line that we have to deal with now. So this was the impact of ICS security events. Um, loss of production is predominantly what you see out there. Loss of control, loss of, uh, of staff time, loss of view, loss of comms, environmental spill, and as you can see, death and injury, it keeps, it keeps scrolling down. This was, uh, this source is security incidents. Uh, this is the risky database going back uh, some time though, okay? Uh, you really don't get an update on those. As we talked about, a lot of folks kind of keep that stuff quiet. Um, but that's kind of the core to how, how the curve works. And the, and, and the reality is a lot of the, the top four are truly what you face on the, on the, from a cyber standpoint. Let's talk about vulnerabilities. Okay, so vulnerabilities, that would be the manufacturer system, uh, the majors, you know, uh, Siemens, uh, Rockwell, Emerson, Yokogawa, Honeywell. Uh, I don't think Foxport is a player anymore, nor is Fisher Porter, Invensys, um, Yokogawa. They're all players in this market. And they all have specific vulnerabilities and those vulnerabilities really spiked in 2011. As you can see, it became a mainstream kind of thing. It became popular. It, it come out of hiding, as I could say, as, as we'd like to say. They had the vulnerabilities before, but they weren't publicized. Now they're publicized, reviewed, and, and pushed. We talked a little bit about Stuxnet, world's first digitalized weapon. Malware spread by USB sticks, flash drive, damage to a large percentage of the Iranian centrifuges. Uh, German steel mill, control system compromised after corporate network was compromised, caused multiple components in system to fail, massive physical damage. Ukrainian power grid, a SCADA system was compromised, 225,000 people lost power for several hours, um, operationally constrained for a longer period. Uh, 2008 to 2016, the F-22 and the F-35 and other sensitive data, large amounts of military data stolen, 50 terabytes, a uh, Chinese businessman pled guilty. Um, these are the things that happen in our world now, unfortunately. Now, when we look at the IACS to IT security, sometimes you'll see the, the word OT. Have you familiar with that word OT? IT, OT, OT is the operational technology. That's uh, what's kind of equivalent um, for the control space in, inside the fence line of the plant. And then the IT um, security is the standard IT folks that you've worked with for many years. They have different priorities. It was interesting, I was in a meeting once and uh, the uh, IT uh, individual was there and uh, we said, what happens when the firewall fails? Well, it fails open. I'm a controls engineer and we thought, hey, it fails open, no connection, everything's shut down. No, no, it fails with everything going through. Open, no blocks. Well, there's a difference in language there that we just sat there and we were stunned. We were like, wait a minute, are you kidding me? No, it fails open, everything connected. And then we're like, well, that's not the way we wanna make sure it's configured. Oh, okay, well, what do you wanna do? But the language itself, the language barrier and terminology barrier between the two organizations is massive. When you talk safety, you talk what, once in, 10,000 years, once in 100,000 years. When you talk uh, cyber, you talk 100,000 attacks in an hour. You just, your vocabulary is not the same. And that's the biggest hurdle between the OT and the IT teams. 
making sure you understand the other person's point of view, make sure you understand their terminology. Um, it is a uh, huge, huge gap. Um, they're worried about confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And we're worried about availability, integrity, and confidentiality in different orders. This is IT and OT comparison. Um, response time, limited knowledge of process event response times, real time knowledge on the, uh, on the, IT, on the uh, OT side. Availability, you know, the occasionally out, uh, outage, uh, occasional outages are tolerated. The plant's down, you're not making money, okay? Um, data, critical, uh, technology life cycle. This is one that it's on the slide, but I can take some knowledge and disagreements with what are on the slides. Three to five years, 20 plus, that's expectation. That's not reality. So a plant manager expects his control system to last 20 years, but he doesn't expect his home computer to last 20 years. That's a little bit of a paradigm. Uh, I, don't, I don't kind of understand that. Um, if you go out of the window of update of five years on your plant control system, you end up spending more and more dollars to upgrade it because you have to make multiple jumps. So the reality is it's an expectation of the life cycle, but it's truly not how the life cycle kind of plays out. Outsourcing common, less common. Um, outsourcing of IACS is becoming more common uh, nowadays. Um, I, it depends on industry, um, but I see more of that coming through. You see patching is timely, less patching. Um, you need to do some patches, but you don't want to patch every day, every hour, every second. You have to be uh, frugal on that. Antivirus is common. You really should have antivirus on your control systems. There's no reason not to. Um, it's, it's kind of a cornerstone. Security awareness on the IT side is good. It's poor in improving risk assessment. Process risk assessment is poor on the IT side, but good on the IACS side. Risk assessment granularity, um, course, uh, individual loop, okay? So you have a SIF, you have a uh, SIF. Is that SIF vulnerable to cyber? That's the million dollar question you have to ask yourself. What kind of SIFs are not? vulnerable to cyber. Well, a new Foxboro 43 AP, a pneumatic controller is really cyber secure. Unfortunately, they're ridiculous in price nowadays, <laughs> but they still make them. Um, but you know, there are other means of, of uh, securing systems um, that actually go backwards in technology to get away from the, the cyber aspects of it. Changes, easy to implement on the IT sides, difficult on the uh, IACS sides. Security, uh, integrity awareness is poor, it's good, or safety, I'm sorry, is poor and good. PHA validation. Uh, so so there's, no, there's no real life cycle or engineering tool or engineering process, that's a better word. There's no process to go through the security on the IT side. There is a consultant that says, look, I wrote a 50 page paper. This is why it's secure and this is how I know it. In the engineering phase or on the ICS side, on the OT side, we use the 62443 life cycle. And when you have that life cycle, there's certain things you have to do at certain times. There's a process, there's a methodology to it. The IT folks don't have that. Um, so that's something that's kind of interesting as we see change.